Welcome back to the channel and this here is exactly the same levitator as the last video but as you might be able to tell from the circuit it's a heck of a lot easier now to make less components and just as stable so I'll step through now and show you how I've deleted things and then I'll show the circuit diagram at the end there it is levitating not very stable, not as stable as using that red circuit over there but all I've got is a hole sensor now and as you just saw it was levitating so next to make it more stable alright it's now much more stable uh, all I've done is added a 0.1 UF capacitor across the base and collector of the transistor also the current usage has gone down from what was 160 milliamps to between yeah about 30 milliamps so back down to how it was running in the first video and as you can tell it's still there rotating around a little bit but certainly a lot more stable so yes the red hall sensor circuit has been omitted from the design oh that's great one thing I wanted to address while it's on test really just to see that it does work for many minutes at a time is the question of putting a diode across the coil uh, nothing's happened to the original transistor the S8050 it's just keeping on running and nothing's happened to the LM358 being used as a comparator so I've kind of left it out I don't know whether that's a good idea I'm probably looking more at component count than I am safety of components but it's been fine I've not uh, needed to use a diode across the coil but it is 39 ohms and we're only chucking through about 30 milliamps. So, I don't know. Seems to be fine without one. And now to the biggest of questions. Can I omit that DC to DC converter and just run it from the 5 volts USB coming out of the power bank? The answer is yes. But look, the current, the current's at nothing, it's going to switch off. Because there's not enough coming out of the power bank. But there we are. It's now directly connected to the 5 volts rail, that uh, grey wire you might be able to see. There we are, no need for the DC to DC converter. As I say, I think this, this might well turn off. Uh, because there's not enough current being used. Oh, there we go, switched off. <laughs> so, new problem, it doesn't use enough power. Oh my word. So, here we are with it running. And here is proper proof of no DC to DC converter. Straight through on the 5 volts and apparently no amperage being used. So it will switch off very shortly. I'll just um, I'll have to get rid of the power bank I suppose and power it by the computer USB. Here we are with the very first levitation of the circuit now on the board. Whoa, okay. Yeah, I'm stable enough. Right, so it's all neatened up now with its wires and what have you. It looks quite nice. The last thing to do is to chop about there. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do. So what I've done is I've brought it outside to a hard edge and I'm going to karate chop it, I think. Something like that. I have no idea if this is going to work. Oh. Got rid of some. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. That's uh, <laughs> that's actually worked out. That's actually worked out. Okay, I might be able to. I might be able to clean that up a little bit. And there we go. A bit of sanding later. This looks fine at the bottom, it supports the structure fine as well and the whole thing is a heck of a lot neater than it started out. The wires 
are covered behind, they run quite neatly down the back of it to the small circuit and then now I'm powering it by the computer's USB because it doesn't use enough power and it does actually go to well nothing, <laughs> nothing on that meter, just a few milliamps to keep something of that weight there which is 1.65 grams to keep that levitated and it's absolutely stable So thanks for following along, good luck with your own build if you do make one, and thanks very much for watching.